Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian Movie Enthusiast, and I am back with some DVD collection videos here. Now a few of you have uh, requested that I review or at least show you some of the DVDs that I purchased while I was in Japan recently, uh, of which there are six videos that I bought when I was over there. Very nice haul actually. But you should know that, you know, I need to do everything in order. So we've already gone through all of the Chinese language movies that I had in my collection, the South Korean movies, and all of the Japanese movies. Now, I was purchasing additional movies while we were going through all of those movies. So I've added actually over 40 additional DVDs to my collection, which include those six Japanese DVDs from my vacation. So we'll all get to those soon. But I still have to finish some of my uh, legacy collection, so to speak. So I have a box of Southeast Asian movies here. And, uh, and then we'll go through my television series box sets. And then we'll get to the additions, which will be in the, uh, the addendum videos. So, yeah, there's at least, man, there's probably about 10 additional videos coming for you on the DVD collection. At least as I keep purchasing them. So let's go here. So here we have a Thai film from Thailand, and that is Alone. Yes, I covered this in my Asian horror playlist when I covered the year 2007. This movie is very impressive. I think uh, undeservedly unknown to a certain extent. This is the same directors as the guys who did uh, Shudder, I believe, which is a very popular film. This one goes under the, a lot of people's radars. Very, very interesting film. It's about a woman who had a Siamese twin, and uh, basically the film starts off with the premise that she is being, uh, I guess, haunted by her Siamese twin who perished during an operation together. And uh, yeah, this movie is very, very good quality. I really like the lead actress here. Let me get her name for you. Uh, Marsha Watanapenich. Uh I really thought she should have been in more movies, but uh, I've only seen her in a few. So yeah, alone, check out my review from uh, 2007 if you want some more details. This is, I think this is more of a rare DVD, because this is an all-region DVD, I believe. And uh, they don't really, they don't really have these anymore, I don't think. So I'm really happy I have this in my collection. It's a film that you may be able to find in Region 3 format, but the all-region version, I think, is extinct. Alright. Our next one here is a no-nonsense, hard-hitting action movie known as Bangkok Knockout. Yeah, this one, a bunch of people are thrown into a... Uh, into a warehouse. They're, like, kidnapped, thrown into a warehouse, and then forced... To defend themselves against a bunch of killers. This actually has some similarities to The Running Man with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And, uh, you know, you have like a small group of rich people who are organizing this. And they're streaming the events on television for like, for the rich people to bet on who's going to survive and who isn't. And uh, this one, this one was directed by, ooh, who's the director here? Pana Ritakrai. And this is a, you know, a Thai action film. A lot of excellent fights in this. Very, very uh, thin plot. The acting is not especially good. I think most of the actors in this are actually stuntmen and women. So uh, there's a lot of great action choreography in this, though. No-nonsense stuff, as I said. There's some really cool fights. And once you get past the first, like, half an hour of setup time, this is basically just non-stop action for the entire, like... Two, last two thirds. In fact, at one point, some dude shows up in a hockey mask, or maybe not a hockey mask, but some type of a metal mask and like an axe, and he reminded me of Jason Voorhees. <laughs> so this is worth checking out if you're if you don't mind some subpar acting and a pretty bad script. Bangkok knockout. All right, now we have two films with the same name but two different films. So this is Born to Fight. Now this is the original film here. Let me uh, fire this up. My review here, because I don't 
entirely remember everything. Born to Fight. This is one, this is a tie action film from 1986. Uh, Panarita Cry again directs and stars in this one. He actually was an actor for a bunch of films back in the day. And uh, it's about a former cop cop turned martial arts coach who trains and fights against criminals. So this is kind of a very low budget film. A lot of the action takes place in like, I don't, I don't know what you would call like suburban woodlands or rural areas. Real like low grade environments in this. Um, but the action is good. You know, it's pretty well choreographed. You have some hard stuntmen falls. Not particularly great, again, in terms of story or characters, but, uh, you know, if, you, if you're interested in seeing an older school Thai action film, this one is actually pretty good. And included in this DVD set is, is Thai Police Story. Yes, Thai Police Story. What did I... I don't even remember if that one was any good. Well, I gave it a pass grade, so let me check my notes again. I'm sorry, but I... I almost have to sometimes. Panarita Cry again, directs and stars again, as a cop caught between corrupt officers and vicious drug gangs. Again, pretty uh, B-grade action flick. Not a big, uh, not a big budget here, but uh, it's nicely violent. And uh, oh, the the English dub of this one is cheesily performed by the same guys who did Hard Boiled and Ricky O. So that's another reason to watch the English dub to this one, the uh, the Thai police story version. So not a bad set. If you could find this cheap and you're into like lower, real low budget, old school Thai action, you know, it's worth watching. You know, uh, Rita Cry has done a number of good movies. Uh, so checking out some of his older films might be a good idea. Then our next one here is, again, same name, and this is Born to Fight, but it's the, uh, it's kind of a remake, even though it's very, very different, and I think superior to the original. So this Born to Fight has, uh, let me see here, again, a policeman attempts to stop a village massacre by terrorists, so a bunch of terrorists take over this village and they're, they're asking for something. I forgot exactly what. Not like it's that important. There's something to do with a bomb and a missile system. And, uh, you know, dude shows up and he starts to beat the crap out of him. Again, it's kind of a remake, but it's very different. If you pick up both versions, you're going to get two very different experiences. This one, let me tell you, the, uh, the finale of this movie is one of the most ridiculous action finales you'll see. And I almost want to tell you kind of what happens, but I'm not going to. It's kind of a mix between really cheesy, like, moments and hard-hitting action. People get messed up in this one. So, again, you know, another Thai action film. And, uh, was this directed by Rita Cry as well? Let me check. Yeah, it is directed by him. The lead actor here is this guy, uh, Dan Chupong or something like that. Yeah, Dan Chupong. People were kind of talking this guy up in the late 2000s, but, you know, he's good if he's surrounded with capable uh, uh, action performers. This is an ensemble piece. I don't think he can really carry a film by himself, but he's good in this, in an ensemble, so I recommend it. Born to Fight. Now, if you can't tell, the Southeast Asian collection of my DVD movies are loaded with action and horror movies. And that's basically all you're going to get from <laughs> in the next, like, two videos. The next one here is a newer classic. Jija Yanin in Chocolate. Yes, Chocolate. So this girl has, uh, she has, I think, autism, uh, the character. And she learns martial arts from watching Bruce Lee and Tony Ja movies. Yes, in the film, that is the plot. And uh, she ends up going around trying to collect money to uh, save her mother who's dying uh, to get medical attention for her. And she has to beat dudes up to collect the money. Jija Yana just exploded onto the scene with this one. This girl is just unbelievable. Does all of her own stunts. She's, uh, 
you know, she's kind of like a, I don't know, like a female deadly version of Tony Ja, for lack of a better term. Very athletic, and uh, the fights are fantastically choreographed. This movie's a lot of fun. If you're into if you're into action flicks, like martial arts action flicks involving women at all, or just anybody, this is highly recommended. Hiroshi Abe actually shows up, the Japanese actor, in a very small role. And uh, some of the fights in this are legendary. They are legendary. So yes, this, this includes a making up feature, too, of chocolate. So that's, that's a reason to get it. Oh, what, what special features did the... The newer Born to Fight, okay, since it's released by Dragon Dynasty, it's going to have some features. Feature commentary with Hong Kong expert Bay Logan. Uh, a 60-minute, 60 60-minute 60 documentary on the film. Uh, a few uh, a few other features there, so this has some good special features to it. All right. All right, so we shift from Thailand, which is basically all of we've covered so far, right, to Vietnam. Yes, there's been a few good Vietnamese action movies in recent years, and Clash is one of them. Well, this is a duo of two actors. Uh, there's Johnny Nguyen, who was actually in Tom Young Gung, or The Protector. He fought Tony Ja near the top of that uh, restaurant. And then uh, Ngoi or Ngo Thanh Van, and uh, she's an incredibly attractive woman. Now, these two have did another movie back in 2006 called The Rebel, which I have in my collection, and then they got back together again and did Clash in 2009. Real basic action plot. Uh, some, of the, some of the supporting character acting is pretty bad. Uh, the plot is flimsy, but the action is good. The action is very good. It's stylish. There's a lot of, uh, there's a good amount of fighting in it, and it's, uh, it's entertaining, man. Entertaining stuff. Vietnam coming, uh, coming into play with some action. I like it. So I would say, you know, we're going to cover Rebel either in the, the, near the end of this video or the next video. I recommend that one first to start. And then if you like the Rebel, check out Clash. All right, this film I covered in my Asian Horror Playlist that is coming soon from 2008. Revolves around a movie theater, which is a great setting, of course, for a horror film. Check out my review of uh, in that particular year. And uh, <clears throat> I think it's pretty good. Some people don't like it. I think it's a pretty, pretty cool horror film. It works. The ending's a bit creepy, too, I thought. Coming soon. Check it out if you got a chance. I think it's getting harder to find, though. All right, here are a few horror films I picked up recently that I have not covered yet in my Asian horror playlist because they're recent films. Uh, the last one was a Thai horror film. This one is also a Thai kind of horror thriller, and that is The Eyes Diary. Now, this one... I was disappointed in. But listen to this premise. After losing his girlfriend to an automobile accident, a man becomes an emergency crew volunteer to steal personal belongings of the dead in an effort to attract spirits for the purpose of reuniting with his dead girlfriend. Now that is a fantastic premise for a movie. And this movie gets a lot of good reviews online, or at least what reviews exist. Seem to like this one a lot. It just didn't work for me. I'll get into more details when we when we get to the particular year in my Asian horror playlist. There was like a, a comedic actor or comedy effect actor who I thought was awful, and uh, yeah, it just didn't work for me. Not terrible, but yeah, did not like it. Here's another Thai horror film, rare one. Eyes Diary, few people know about, but then there's this one. I think it's called Hong Hoon. Let me double check. This has the lead actor from Shudder in it. Yes. Hong Hoon. So this one, again, great premise. Let me take a look at the premise here. Man, my nose itches tonight. Okay. 
Alright, in this one, the story revolves around individuals whose loved ones died shortly after each of them received a mannequin of his or her likeness. So this one was actually pretty good. And uh, I think it came out in 2014 or 2015. This is a very artsy movie, though, and it's hard to get it with subtitles. This person doesn't have subs, which, you know, definitely I think uh, there was quite a bit of dialogue, but I still enjoyed it. You could tell it was uh, kind of surrealistic a little bit, it had some ambiguity to it. I read some reviews online that agreed with this, but uh, it's very proficient in like its direction and its cinematography and its mood, you know, building. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll cover it more in my Asian horror playlist, so look out for that. I covered this one, I think back in 2007. We're sticking with Thai stuff here. That's the house. This one, this was in the time period where Thailand could just could do no wrong. They were just on a smoking hot streak for horror films from like 2004 all the way through to 2009 or so. This one was really cool. I, uh, I really like this one a lot. Check out my Asian horror video from 2007. It's got some interesting moments to it. It's creepy. I like the lead actress quite a bit. Check out the house. I also covered this one on my Asian Horror Playlist, and that is The Man Eater. Yes, The Man Eater. This one goes to some places that you might not expect. It was quite controversial, I believe. It's about a guy who, uh, well, let me double check this here. I don't want to get this wrong, because this is a little bit of a nuanced, a little bit of a nuanced film here. I remember it being pretty controversial because people didn't like that the lead character was uh, was portrayed in a favorable light. You know what I mean? They, uh, they try to make him seem sympathetic even though he's committing all of these heinous crimes. So, after moving to Thailand, a poor Chinese immigrant suffers discrimination and eventually resorts to horrific acts of violence in an attempt to cure himself of his severe respiratory illness. So yes, there's, uh, there's some violence directed towards young children in this movie, so check out my review. I think this was a 2004 uh, release, so check out my video from 2004 for some additional details. This has an original trailer and some additional trailers. This is a good movie, though. It is good. It goes places, I'll tell you that much. Then we'll probably finish off the night with this triple feature here. You got, of course, the Ung Bak trilogy. Everybody's got to have Ung Bak in their DVD collection, right? This is the breakout hit of Tony Ja. Back in 2003, this set the bar for 21st century martial arts cinema. It's a must-watch for anybody who's even remotely interested in action films. And uh, tons of great acrobatics, stunts, fighting in this. Uh, you know, I don't want to go through Tony Jaa's whole career, but uh, you know, he's, he's made some good stuff after this, too. I think some of his other films are a bit underrated. This has some... Uh, special features, behind the scenes, live Tony Ja performances that were filmed, a rap music video with Tony Ja. I might have to watch that. So yes, Ung Bak, you gotta watch it. Now, Ung Bak 2, I think, is severely underrated. Ung Bak 2 is severely underrated. This one isn't really a sequel. It's like, a, it was set in like the 1400s or something. And it's very... The, the best part about this movie is that the action choreography is very good. The finale of like 20 plus minutes is, is phenomenal. And nobody ever talks about the finale to this movie somehow. And I think it's it's on par with anything in Ung Bak. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of weaponry that's actually used in this, which is a nice change of pace. The sets and like the environments that they fil filmed in have a very primal, like grimy old school feel to them. Uh, some of the sets are also very, there's like a nighttime dance routine that has like this absolutely gorgeous set to it. And uh, yeah, this movie's awesome. 
I don't know why everybody has such a problem with this. I love this movie. I think it's it's almost as good as the first one. It probably is overall. I found it just to be really an interesting film, and it was totally different from the first movie in terms of plot and characters and everything. So Ung Bak 2, I definitely recommend. Just keep hitting the Thai, the Thai stuff tonight. And then finally, we have Ung Bak 3, which I think is rightly criticized. <laughs> yes, Ung Bak 3. This one was kind of a mess. You know, Ung Bak 2 kind of ends on a cliffhanger, and this one wraps up the story. But not in a not in a really satisfying manner, you know what I mean? Uh, didn't really re, uh, get up to that bar of the first two Ung Bak films. You have a lot of emphasis on Dan Chu Pong's character in this, which I don't know what they were thinking. There's some weird like supernatural stuff that's thrown in that I felt like really didn't have much of much of a basis. Fighting not as good. This is the first film where I thought Tony Jaa was kind of treading water a little bit. But still, I, you know, given all of its flaws, I still think this is a somewhat watchable film. Unbelievably. I know I'm in the minority on that. Uh, I think it's somewhat watchable. But, again, a huge downgrade from the first two films, for sure. Alright, well, let's do... I want to get this ton in two videos, so we just have to do a few more here. <clears throat> we have Phobia. I covered this in my Asian Horror Playlist in 2008. Check out my video for that. Very good Thai horror anthology here. Very good. The first segment's probably my favorite, but uh, yes, this is very solid stuff. You know, I, I say... You know, Thailand, Japan, South Korea have been coming out with some of the best Asian horror, or just best horror anthologies of the past 20 plus years. A lot of people seem to ignore a lot of these, but uh, this is a good one. Phobia, also known as Phorbia. And then the last film we'll cover tonight is Phobia 2. And this one I think is even better than the first one. This has, uh, again, horror anthology, multiple um, highlights in this one. Multiple highlights of films in this. Check out my review from 2009 in my Asian Horror Playlist. This is very good. One of my favorite horror anthologies, uh, maybe ever, really. A lot of really interesting stuff, so check this one out. So that's it for tonight. And... Uh, Hopefully we'll finish off this Southeast Asian collection in uh, my next video. I got more Thai stuff. It's all, all Thai mostly with some Vietnamese thrown in. And then I'm going to have some Indonesian films uh, coming up as well as some Filipino films. So check out my next part. I will see you later.